Double tracking. So double tracking is a great thing you can do to help broaden your stereo image and create some stereo effects with just mono tracks. So often the case is that you record a single part. Let's say a guitar part. This is a guitar song. So you record that part and you have this great sounding guitar and everything, but your mix is lopsided. So it sounds something like this. We're going to mute this other guitar. Okay, cool guitar part, bass, drums, but the guitar is just off to the left side. So you could take and try to use your stereo delay to set that up. And we already have the stereo delay set up. The thing that we need to do is say, let's take and put one side all the way to the left and one side to the right. And now we have... Okay, but it's obviously one guitar that is delayed on the other side, on the right side, and original on the left. Now that can just get really old if you're just recording one track and delaying it and putting it to the other side. And a lot of people, they'll, they'll copy, duplicate tracks and pan them and stuff like that. And unless you do something to it like delay or some other effect, it, it really doesn't widen the image at all. But the really one of the best things you can do to widen the image is to do double tracking. Now double tracking is basically where, well instead of trying to make this sound like two guitars, let's just record this part twice, record it with a different guitar. We could record it with the same guitar and the same amp again, but it's going to sound really similar. If we change guitars or, or change amplifiers or both, then it's going to sound like two different guitars playing the same thing and that's what we've done here. So here's our original guitar and there's a second guitar, different guitar, different amp. Both have this same kind of delay effect on it as you can see there. Okay, so once we get to the chorus, you're going to see double tracking again, the distorted guitars. Okay, so if we listen, there's one, there's another one, there's another one, there's another one, and there's another one. And all five guitars are playing the exact same part. Which is kind of cool because, you know, if we solo all these guitars, it ends up sounding pretty dang cool. Okay, and it's definitely a lot better than just having two guitars or something like that. Okay, so it's making it bigger and better and it sounds like you have a whole army of guitars. But what happens is if you do this too much, and you don't really vary what you're playing in each part and you're just panning them off to the left and the right you get a sickness in mixing called big mono and that's basically what we have here so we don't really have anything different happening left and right we obviously have doubled guitars on our left and on our right and so it's a bigger image but there's no real activity that's different that's happening on either side to solve that big mono issue. We just have a wider mono. We don't really have stereo where there's crazy and exciting things happening on different sides. And so at this point in this song, we need to keep working on it. We need to maybe find an alternative guitar part that's not playing the same guitar riff and put that on one side and not duplicate that and then maybe put some strings on the other side or or a lead part on one side and so these are things we can do to avoid that big mono problem but what's going to happen it's natural thing that's going to happen you get carried away with the double tracking which is great and you end up to big mono so that's something you can do to help create stereo effects make your tracks bigger spread across the whole stereo image but it also has the potential of getting you to big mono. But that is double tracking.